Hey guys, how's it going? We're here once again with our next video for Chapter 6. Today we're going to be taking a look at the uh, properties for quadrilaterals. Okay, now we essentially, again, as you can see probably on my left-hand side, um, and if, if you can't, uh, go ahead and pull out your family tree. Okay, so pull out right now at this moment your quadrilaterals family tree, so you guys can go ahead and follow along with these quadrilateral properties that I have, uh, this chart that I have for you guys. So this is just a way of condensing everything that you already know uh, from or learn from the quadrilateral family tree, and we're gonna put it all comprehensively uh, on this chart. So basically this is a quick, easy access to uh, all that information instead of having to read through everything, okay? So I am, I'm actually going to run through this video fairly quick since we already essentially have all the information on our quadrilateral family tree. So I'll repeat once again before I start, if you have not completed the quadrilateral family tree um, at this time, please go ahead and complete that. Okay, so let me go ahead and actually zoom in here. Okay, all right, so here we go. Uh, first off, parallelograms, all right? We have a few things that we know from parallelograms from our family tree. It says that we have opposite sides that are parallel, opposite sides are congruent, opposite angles are congruent, the diagonals bisect each other, and finally, that the consecutive angles are supplementary. So those are five things that we know from parallelograms. Let's see if we can find those on here. So again, I'm just going to run down the list real quick uh, and see which one of these properties apply to parallelograms. So first off, uh, all sides are congruent. That's not true. Uh, we only know that opposite sides are congruent. Uh, all angles are equal, equiangular or all angles are congruent. Again, that's not true. We know that opposite angles are congruent, but not that all angles are congruent. So again, those are the two that we actually we see right here. So those two do apply. Please put a check mark on those. Opposite sides are congruent. We know that property from the family tree, and we know that opposite angles are congruent. Okay, we also know that the bi the diagonals bisect each other. That was another one that we wrote down. Okay, all right. This one actually, why don't you guys go ahead and erase it for me all the way through? That is a property that we will not be dealing with in this class. Okay. All right, let's keep running through. Uh, diagonals are perpendicular bisectors of each other. We know that they are bisectors, but we never said anything about being perpendicular bisectors. So um, that one does not apply. Uh, it says, next one says, two pairs of opposite sides are parallel. Yeah, we know that, all right? That made it a parallelogram. Two opposite sides are parallel. So that is um, our next property. And actually, none of the rest will apply because uh, the next one says only one pair of opposite sides are parallel. No, we have two pairs that are opposite. Uh, it says, the next one says that all diagonals are congruent on parallelograms. That's not true. Um, then that is not always the case because that would have been something we wrote down in our family tree, which we obviously did not. Next thing is that each diagonal bisects at least one pair of opposite angles. Okay, And that is also, once again, not necessarily true. I mean, obviously, we can probably draw a parallelogram that fulfills that requirement, but not it's not applicable or it is not true for every single parallelogram. Uh, again, the next ones will not apply, so exactly one pair of opposite sides is congruent. Um, that is not true because we actually have two sides of up two pairs of opposite sides, not one pair that are congruent. Uh, diagonals are perpendicular to each other. Again, we didn't mention anything like that before. At least one pair of consecutive sides is congruent. Okay, at least one pair of consecutive sides is congruent. Uh, and that that is just simply not true. So that's basically saying that this and this are congruent. That's not necessarily true. Okay, let me go ahead and erase that and try another set. So this and this are not congruent. So anything that you... Anything like that that is consecutive is not congruent, at least not when we're talking about the sides. Actually, neither are the angles. No two consecutive uh, angles will be congruent on parallelograms. So only those four 
will apply for parallelograms. Opposite sides are congruent. Opposite angles are congruent. The diagonals bisect each other. Okay, and then finally, um, two pairs of opposite sides are uh, parallel. So what I'm actually going to do, um, I'm going to actually take a look at the next one, which is the rhombus. Now, notice on your family tree, guys. Again, I keep referencing back to our family tree. So if you haven't done that one, if you haven't done that video yet, please go back and do that one. So for the family tree, it says that for rhombus, it actually falls underneath parallelogram. What does that mean? Well, that just means that everything we checked off for parallelogram is also going to check off for rhombus. We're going to check off a few more things, but we definitely have to check off those because a rhombus is underneath the parallelogram. It is a parallelogram. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and see what other things apply here. Well, what other things did we write down for rhombus? We wrote down that we have four congruent sides. Okay. So all sides are congruent this top one definitely applies okay we didn't say anything about all the angles being congruent so that we can skip that but we do know that the diagonals will bisect each other okay all right so we definitely can go ahead and mark that one off but not only do they bisect each other they are also perpendicular bisectors meaning they will create uh perpendicular diagonals okay all right um and actually let's go ahead and read through the rest of these uh, only one pair of sides are congruent i'm sorry one, only one pair of sides are parallel that's not true because we have two pairs of sides that are parallel uh the diagonals are congruent we didn't, never said anything about that and that didn't apply for parallelograms either so no that's not true um each diagonal will bisect at least one pair of opposite angles and yes that one is true Okay, if we draw a, if we draw a, um, uh, I'm sorry, if we draw a diagonal, okay, if we draw both diagonals, we'll actually notice that those diagonals will bisect uh, at least one pair of opposite angles. So yes, that one does apply. All right, the next one says exactly one pair of opposite sides is congruent. That's not true because actually all sides are congruent. Okay, not exactly just one pair. Uh, the next one says the diagonals are perpendicular to each other. Yes, they are. We already talked about that. Uh, next to say at least one pair of consecutive sides is congruent. Okay. At least one pair of consecutive sides is congruent. Okay. Well, let's think about that. Uh, consecutive sides. Okay. Um, actually, yeah. This one does apply. All right. Because if we think of consecutive sides, the in this case, they actually will be congruent because guess what? All sides are congruent on these rhombuses. So yes, that does apply. Okay. All right. The next one uh, says at least one pair of consecutive angles is congruent. That is not true. Okay. All right. Because one angle might be uh, like we drew for the parallelogram. One angle may be 80. The other might be 100. They do add up to be 180. But that says nothing about that being congruent. Those are obviously not congruent. So we are done with rhombus. Let's move on to rectangle. And once again, because a rectangle falls underneath a parallelogram, I have to check off all the ones that I've already marked off for parallelogram. Okay, those four. Again, I know I'm running quite fast through this, guys. But again, all I'm doing is condensing our family tree and making it into one nice chart. Okay? Uh, the next thing is, okay, let's see, for rectangle, are all sides congruent? That's not true. Okay, you can see from the picture up top, that's definitely not true. All angles are congruent, though, because they are all 90-degree angles. So, yes, that one does apply. Uh, the next one says the diagonals are perpendicular bisectors of each other. That is not true. So, if you can think of a, a really long, skinny rectangle, we could definitely uh, draw in our diagonals, but they will not be perpendicular okay so that one does not apply all right uh the next one let's see uh let's see where i'm trying to find the rectangles um at least one pair of opposite sides are congruent i'm sorry are parallel that's not true because both sides are parallel uh next one says diagonals are congruent that one is true 
the diagonals are congruent, they're not perpendicular, but they are definitely congruent. Next one says each diagonal bisects at least one pair of opposite angles. Uh, that is actually not necessarily true. Again, if you think of a really long skinny rectangle, you will not see the diagonals be bisectors. Okay. Uh, next one says at least exactly one pair of sides, opposite sides, is congruent. Okay, actually two pairs of opposite sides are congruent here, so that one does not apply. Diagonals are perpendicular. We already said that's not true. Um, at least one pair of sides, of consecutive sides, is congruent. Well, let's think about it. Is this and this congruent? Nope. Is this and this congruent? Nope. Those are consecutive, but they're not congruent. Okay, so this one does not apply. However, the last one, it says at least one pair of consecutive angles congruent. Yeah, that has to be true because all the angles are 90 degrees. So that has to be true. Okay. All right. So we're halfway there. Let's, or almost halfway there. Square is actually not too bad because, again, square is not only under parallelogram, it's also under rectangle and a rhombus. So everything that applies for parallelogram, for a rhombus, and a rectangle have to be included for square. So I can see right off the bat that a rhombus was uh, equilateral, so I have to check it out for square. A rectangle was equiangular. These are all properties of parallelograms. Uh, but my diagonals are also perp perpendicular bisectors because that applied for rhombuses. All right. The next one that applied was diagonals are congruent. That one, that one, that one, and that one. So quite a bit here for um, squares. Let's just go ahead and confirm those last. I believe it's only two that didn't apply. Uh, only one pair of opposite sides are parallel. That's not true because we have two pairs of sides that are parallel. And finally, exactly one pair of opposite sides is congruent. That's not true because all of the sides are congruent. Okay? So, square was actually not too bad. That one was pretty easy. We just have to check off everything that already applied for the previous one. Now, we're moving on from the realm of parallelograms to trapezoids. Okay? So take a look at that portion on your family tree. Now, if you look at trapezoids, there was only one characteristic, one property that a trapezoid had, and that was that one pair of sides is parallel, okay? And that is actually right, oh, sorry, sorry, one, only one pair of sides is parallel. So that was actually, whoops, give me a second. Sorry, guys, put it in the wrong spot. Why does it keep Give me one second, guys. Let me adjust this. There we go. All right. So exactly one pair of opposite sides is parallel. Okay. Not congruent. They're parallel. Okay. That was trapezoid, and that was the only thing that applied to trapezoid. Obviously, it is a parallel. I'm sorry. It is a quadrilateral. So, yes, the inside angles do add up to be 360, and, yes, it does have four sides. But the only other distinguishing property of trapezoids is that we have only one pair of sides that are parallel. Now, having said that, isosceles trapezoid falls under trapezoid, so that also takes that property. However, there are a couple more that we apply here. And if you read the three things that we wrote down for isosceles trapezoids, which is congruent legs, congruent base angles, and congruent diagonals, we can see which other ones will apply here. So, uh, let's see, only one pair of opposite sides are congruent, we, or, I'm sorry, parallel. We said that one did apply, okay? But the next one also, the diagonals are congruent. We also said that one in our family tree, okay? Uh, each diagonal bisects at least one pair of opposite angles, that's not necessarily true, uh, but exactly one pair of opposite sides is congruent. That is true. Remember, guys, up here, those two are congruent. Okay, so exactly one pair of sides was congruent. The bases weren't, but the 
the legs definitely were congruent. That's what makes it a nice isosceles trapezoid. All right. Uh, next thing is diagonals are perpendicular to each other. Again, not necessarily true. At least one pair of consecutive sides is congruent. Not true uh, because the bases may be different from the sides. So definitely not true. However, the last one does apply. If you remember, let me see if I can draw it here. This angle and this angle are congruent. So base angles are congruent, which means the other two base angles are congruent. So if I were looking at the first two, so these two down here, those are consecutive, and yes, they are congruent. So yes, that last property does apply. Okay. All right, guys, we're almost done here. Let's go ahead and finish off. The only other one we have to take a look at is kites. Now, kites had three different things here uh, on our family tree. We had congruent legs. We had congruent, I'm sorry, let me repeat that. I was looking at the wrong one. We have two pairs of adjacent congruent sides. We have perpendicular diagonals, and we have one diagonal that is bisected. Okay, so two pairs of adjacent congruent sides. So let's see what that satisfies. So I'll tell you right now, nothing on the top applied for trapezoid or isosceles, and actually nothing in the top will apply for kites. The only one that we definitely apply for kite would be this one. Each diagonal bisects at least one pair of opposite sides. Okay? That does apply. Okay? Because again, if you think about it, if you draw in your diagonals, you will create bisectors. Okay? You will create two angles that are exactly the same on either side of that diagonal. Okay? Um, each, exactly one pair of sides is congruent that's not true because they actually have two pairs of sides that are congruent. Again I'm gonna use my little diagram up here. This and this are congruent. This and this are congruent. So we have two pairs so that one wasn't true. The next one says diagonals are perpendicular um are perpendicular to each other. That is exactly right. If you take a look at the diagram here, notice that little square box in the middle. That's because they are perpendicular. Uh, at least one pair of consecutive sides is congruent. Yes, that's true. Because if I look at these two, those are congruent. Or if I look at these two, those are consecutive and they're also congruent. So yes, this does apply. However, for the last one, pairs of, I'm sorry, Consecutive angles are not congruent. Okay, so that one does not apply. And I apologize for some reason my pen is not acting. There we go. So that one does not apply. So the only ones that will apply are those three properties. Okay. All right, guys, so please make sure you have both the family tree done and the quadrilaterals properties done. This chart will help you for the rest of this unit. If for some reason you don't understand any one of these properties, please make sure you ask. Don't hesitate to ask. Make sure you feel comfortable enough with the material to where you can proceed to the next uh, section. I believe the next section deals with uh, matching game, you have to match characteristics and properties with a certain type of quadrilateral, as well as your first practice for this unit. So go ahead and stop the video at this time and move on to both of those uh, practices and move on then to your next set of videos. All right, guys, have a good one. Bye.